person in the grounds of Old Buick, an out of the way chapel in the foothills of the Cheviots in Northumberland. This is a place of beginnings and a place to which I have continued to return throughout my many years in ministry. I've come here to pray, but also to ask the question and to reflect on that which was posed by Paul Revel. What do you feel God is saying to the church in these days? Gosh, is there not an easier question? <laughs> in some ways I think it's presumptuous of anybody to assume what God might be saying. So this is no definitive word, no particular revelation, just a hunch. Down the lane from here is a is a crossroads and by the crossroads is a old Celtic cross. And I'm always mindful of that verse in Jeremiah 6:16, 6, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask, what is the good way? And walk in it. I think, let alone the church, the world is at a crossroads. And we need to find the good way to walk in it, that we might find rest and peace for our souls. I think it's certainly true for the church. The church is at a crossroads. When people say, you know, what's the prophetic word? What's God saying? I think God's saying what he's always said, that he loves the world, that his loving purposes are about redeeming and bringing all things under Christ. But then what particular might God be saying in this season? I don't think God's saying a great deal. I'm mindful of that illustration that when you go swimming, when they're open and you're allowed, all the noise is at the shallow end. It's at the deep end that is often quiet and I sometimes wonder if God isn't being silent because silence causes us to reflect, to stop, to pause, to lament and to repent. Not that heavy handed kind of shame and guilt ridden thing, but repentance is metanoia. It's, it's turning in the way in which we think, changing our attitudes reorientating our lives again in the ways of God, regretting and repenting of those things that perhaps we've forgotten about. Certainly the church finds itself in exile. We're in a strange land. And, and those who say, well, when we get back to normal are to me in cloud cuckoo land. And they're a bit like the contemporaries of Jeremiah who were saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Jeremiah wasn't a prophet of doom and despondency because he went on to say, actually, we need, we're not going back to Jerusalem. Things have changed. We find ourselves in a different place. And the question for the people of Israel in exile was, how do we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I think that's what God is asking us. How are you going to sing my song in this changing world in which we live? And in, as we live in that changing world where we are a fairly marginalized people. We are called, as Jeremiah urged, to pray for the blessing of those who are around us. Lockdown has turfed us out of our church buildings. It's taken away from us those opportunities to be together, to have the meetings, to have the studies, to have fellowship, all that kind of stuff in the ways in which we were once familiar. I just wonder if God has not chucked us out into our neighbourhoods to be where we are called to be, to love our neighbour, to bring and share his good news and to discover what God is doing in our neighbourhoods, to bring blessing. So what is God saying to the church? Stop, stand, listen, ask, seek, and where we find ourselves in this new world, pray blessing. Be a blessing. Be transforming light and hope to all those whom we are now reconnecting and connecting with in this changing world. And as we do so, the verse that came to me this morning was that familiar verse from Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Act justly. 
There was lots in the old ways. People say when we get back to normal, there was actually lots of ways in the normal that just have been revealed in pandemic as unjust. We need to be people of justice. And we need to be people of mercy and compassion. Act justly, love mercy, and above all, walk humbly. If one thing we have learned through this pandemic is that the Western modernity's arrogance has been exposed for the fallacy that it is that we cannot live without God. We have the highest death rate per head of population of any country in the world. This is not a time for boasting great achievements. This is time of weeping and walking humbly before God and recognising that we cannot live without God and we cannot live with God simply at the peripheral of our lives. We need to learn to live in dependence upon God, act justly, love mercy and walk humbly before him and trust that known God who is known to us in and through his son Jesus. Trust that known God as we face the uncertainty and the unknown future. Thank you.